I know that you struggle to drop nukes in Krunker. You want to know the best ways to drop nukes? How do these players seem to nuke any lobby possible? Well, I'm going to teach you how to do that today. Okay, let's get straight into it. I'm not one of the best players in the game. Okay, I only have like 260 nukes. But I think there's a couple of nukes. And I think there's a few tips that I could give for dropping nukes. Um, I've only really been playing AK for a couple months now. But I would definitely say it's the best gun for uh, nuking with. Force, thank you for the 3,000. Okay, let's spin it. <gasps> Imagine. Legendary. Okay, I'll take a face. My first tip is something that isn't even gameplay related. But I would recommend you play earlier in the day based off whatever region you're in. I would say before 4 p.m. The reason for this is basically just so you can verse kids that are playing in school. You'll notice the excessive amount of guest lobbies if you play before like 4 p.m. Right now it's 5 p.m. So kids are coming home from school and actually playing on their setups. So they might actually be decent at the game. But if you're playing before like 4 p.m., you're, you're going to be able to find some bot lobbies for sure. I mean, any any lobby early in the morning is going to be is going to be good to to try and nuke on or even double nuke on. So the the the, the spawns are going to vary from map to map, but I would say you try and learn. There are however many maps in this in this game. There's like eight maps in Crunker, I think. Try and learn the spawns, or even if you don't know every single spawn, at least try to recognize where players most commonly are fighting. Which on Oasis is this this area right here. This is like the hot spot for players in this map. And if you're going for nukes, movement isn't even everything. Like, you don't have to be the most insanely talented with, with movement or bee hopping to be able to drop nukes. If you watch people like Exerno play, you really just have to be able to hold down, I don't know what you call them, hot, hot zones, I guess, almost. No, the knowledge of knowing where people are going to spawn and come from and where the hot zone is on that map is very crucial to dropping nukes. It debatably more crucial than be hopping at 500 speed. I know that there's a spawn commonly here. I know commonly we'll see people um, up on this little island here, so you can peek this. And then from this this spot, you can also beam people through mid. This guy's drip is insane. That's so clean. And I should have been pre-aiming that corner there because I know that kids will always spawn back here. Notice how I even spawned back here. And once you start to learn like the hot zones of a map and like where people are commonly going to spawn, you can then begin to path your rotation. There are certain rotations that, that players will use for certain maps, but I would, I would definitely say learn the spawns yourself and take the routes that you feel most comfortable taking in maps. Okay, so when you're choosing a map, um, most of the time you want to vote FFA. Nukes are actually very possible in TDM and Hardpoint and Kill Confirmed, if not slightly easier than going for nukes in, t in FFA because it's a bit more controlled and you can you can tend to guess a little bit more where the players are going to spawn. Plus, a lot of bots like to play in these game modes. So, Kanji is the easiest map to rotate around. There are a couple of maps, notably the new ones that have been added, like past Oasis and further on, where most of the rotations are literally just be hopping around the map in circles. So yeah, Kanji is, is one of those maps, just like Oasis, just like debatably uh, site and industry, that you can just be hop around in circles. And with knowledge of like maybe four or five spawns, you can just consistently drop nukes on this map. There's a spawn there. Kids usually will chill on this helipad. There's a spawn right here. On maps like this, like Kanji, I, as much as this is like a hard point, I don't like holding it down as much because I feel really exposed when I'm, I'm in that area. So this is one of the maps where I will just try and keep my movement up and just continue hopping around the map. Something I will do to confuse enemies a lot when I'm playing is when there's an enemy, I will be hop behind them and then instantly 180 like this and then just keep rotating around them. So say this, say, say there's an enemy here, I would, I would, I would just keep... And my god, if those kids are on track pads, there is no way they're keeping track of where you're going. I find it useful to b-hop through someone and then b-hop back at them. Most of the time, if you're going above like 250 speeds, and they're just, they're just gonna, their brain and, and their reactions are just not fast enough. But don't do that if they're sniping. Yeah, do not do not do that if someone's sniping. If someone has a sniper aimed at your head, don't b-hop straight at them. You, you want to avoid those kind of lines of sight at all costs. Kanji's quite a close quarters map compared to things like Oasis and stuff. So snipers aren't as big of an issue. But there's just enough distance to where shotguns aren't that major an issue either. Alright, I dropped 20 kills that game. Um, I couldn't manage to nuke because there was only basically two players spawning in by the end of it. But hopefully if we run up a Sub-Zero FFA, I'll be able to drop a nuke this game. Alright, so Sub-Zero is, is the basics of just holding down hard points. 
The hot zone of this map is right here around this well. This is where the most players are going to be. The spawns of Sub-Zero are a little bit more complicated than ones like Kanji, which we just learned. But if you've been playing the game for any longer than a week or two, you'll, you'll learn them. I know learning spawns isn't something I can teach in a video. It's something you just have to go and play and do. I could sit here and tell you where every single spawn point is, but it, you're not going to remember. The best way is just simply as terrible of an answer as it is. And as much as I know you don't want to hear it, it's practice, man. Learning where those players are. Learning where people usually pop out of. Learning how the players peak. And also, something I don't think enough people do is actually analyze the players you're going up against. Like, learn who guest one is. Learn what where he likes to go. Maybe a, camp, uh, a corner that he's camping in a lot in the lobby. Like, try and analyze the players that you're going against and, like, their movement. And, and try and predict how they're going to play. But when you're moving so fast in a game like Krunker, it's important that you, re that you react to enemies fast. So that they can't uh, hit you first. We're on a 14 streak here, not doing too bad. AK is best? Yeah, man. Foot, foot, foot. Oh, that guy could have easily killed me with a sniper. Yeah, that's something you don't want to do. You want to try and always keep moving. I almost just lost my nuke to that. Because I just stopped moving and I'm a Pepega. Always keep moving. Yeah, for nuking, AK is probably the easiest. I used to drop nukes with rev rev Revolver back in the day. I got, like... My first few weeks of playing Krunker, I got a 48 kill streak with Revolver on Undergrowth. And it was my first ever Krunker video I uploaded on my second channel. 50 seconds left to get six kills. Can I do it? SMG is really good also, yeah. That's what Nevsky plays a lot, and that guy has Nuke Tamer. So it must be good, right? There's only one guy left in this lobby. 30 seconds left. This is an issue with um, just rolling Steam players or new players in general. It just doesn't... It makes them not want to play the game. And you will get a lot of lobbies where kids just leave on you here. I might not even be able to get this. Oh, I'm so happy people spawned in. I need two kills. And there's my new... And that, my friends, is how you nuke in Krunker. 